Hey everyone, I was going through some of my uh, old images from a couple years ago and I was pondering and reflecting on what a horrible post-processor I was a few years ago when I first started getting into photography. If, uh, if you haven't gone through that exercise and gone back and look at some of your, your early images and how you post-process those, I, uh, I highly encourage that uh, act of humility. It is definitely a great way to, to see how to see how well you're uh, progressing as a photographer. So um, I didn't really realize where I was at today versus where I was then. It kind of made me feel good that, you know what, Mark, you, you actually are getting a little bit better. So, you know, keep at it, buddy. But, um, you know, those are some very glaring things that jump out at me. And as you can imagine, um, most new photographers usually oversaturate their images and I was definitely uh, no exception. My images look like very cartoonish or, you know, I went through the HDR phase for a while. But the thing that really jumped out at me was the way that I, I used to apply contrast to images in the way I do now. I used to just, you know, go in Lightroom, you take that contrast slider and you just throw it over to the right, 50, 75, whatever it is. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And a lot of times you'd end up with kind of a muddy image. But um, in other times there wasn't enough contrast in a lot of my images and they were just very flat and boring and lifeless. They didn't have that three-dimensional pop that um, we all kind of want with our photos. So, you know, adding contrast with luminosity mask is really how I got into luminosity masking. And because at first I was very uh, hesitant to it, I was uh, very intimidated, to be honest with you, with luminosity masks. But um, I, I remember I downloaded a free free copy of uh, Raya Pro and uh, Jimmy McIntyre's um, luminosity plugin, and I played with it for a couple of days, and I was really amazed. I taught myself. I watched a couple of videos on YouTube, and uh, it, it's very simple to to grasp the concept. And I, like I said, I started doing it with um, started using luminosity masks just to add contrast. So I figured that's a a great segue for uh, for other people to possibly get into it. So um, first things first is um, if you if you don't already have a luminosity plugin for Photoshop, the the big three are really Tony Kuiper's TK Actions, um, Greg Benz's Lumenzia, which is what I use, and then Jimmy McIntyre's Raya Pro, which is the the, the free one that I used. Um, to, to first start out. And they all offer a, a free kind of like mini plugin, but it's, you know, it's plenty powerful. You can definitely get your feet wet using luminosity masks with any of them. I'll put links to all three in the description below. So you can download the, the full versions. You can download the, um, the uh, smaller versions. It's very simple to do. There's very detailed instructions on all their sites to um, how to install the plugin. I think it probably takes a minute to download and just a couple minutes to install. So very simple to do. Once you have it down, or once you have it plugged in, <laughs> you, um, you, you'll you notice that all, all luminosity plugins are really broken down the same. You have your, your darks, you have your midtones, and then you have your lights. And then you have your varying degrees of each tone. So you have, you know, you have your, your, your darkest areas or D6s or your lightest areas or your L6s. So like if I hit D6 here, and remember, black conceals, white reveals. So anything that's identified in white, the luminosity mask is saying, since we have D6 highlighted here, that these are the darkest areas of the image. If I go to D4, these are the areas that are, they're not the darkest, but they're, you know, they're, they're fairly dark. And then if I go up to D2, you'll notice that you'll start to see some of the skies actually highlighted. And um, the brightest parts of the image are the areas that are pure black because we're on the dark side. Now, if we go over to the light side of the luminosity plugin, if we go down to L6, you guess that these are going to be the lightest parts or the brightest parts of the image. And that's right through here. This is where the sun is actually rising. And then as we step up, if we go to L5, you'll notice that more and more Wow, I got a dirty sensor. Anyway, um, you'll notice that more and more the scene becomes white because it's getting lighter. So if we go to L4, you'll see it's more white. Uh, L3, L2, and then you, you get the general idea. So right now, everything that is white is, gonna, is being kind of called out in the L2 luminosity mask. So what I do, to add contrast, I always start with the darks, and usually around, let's see, D2. I don't wanna really add anything to the sky so much, so I'm gonna go to D3, 
everything in white. The sky is pretty much all black. So this is really where I want to start adding my contrast. And I usually add it with curves or levels, but just to keep it simple here, what, I, what we'll do is we'll just go to select. Once we have our luminosity mask that we want to go with, you'll notice the marching ants that we're all familiar with. And it's only identifying the areas that um, were identified with the D2 or D3 or whichever one that we actually use. So um, once you have it identified, we're going to go over to Adjustments, Brightness Contrast, and then you can just move this contrast slider over. And you can see what a huge difference it already did. It didn't add any contrast up here to the sky, very little to the water, because if you remember where the white areas were, or the marching ants were in this image, that's the only area. Like if you watch the sky here, let me crank this all the way up and turn this on or off, the sky doesn't change at all you identified only the areas you want to apply the contrast to, which is really cool. So um, what I usually do is put it up to like around, maybe around 40. And then I like to go back later and kind of move the opacity of each um, individual layer to really fine tune it. So we're going to go back to Lumenzia and let's go to D4 now. And now we're getting to a, you know, a little bit darker value. So we're going to select that and hit select. And then we're going to come down here and hit brightness contrast, and same thing. Put that to around 40, and then go back to Lumenzia, and we'll do D5. Um, I usually like to go, um, you know, like units of three. Like I, I normally wouldn't do a, a D2, a D4, and a D6. I usually kind of keep the three together. So it would be D2, D3, D4, or D3, D4, D5, whatever the, the combination is, but I usually like to do three together. So um, once we have D5 selected, and you'll notice again, the marching ants are here, and you'll notice that there's less marching ants now because it's only identifying the darker areas of the image. And then we're gonna come down to adjustments, brightness, contrast, and we will put this up to around 40. I always like to group everything together. So put that command G, and we will name this dark contrast. And then we can turn the entire group on and off and you can see the difference. And once again, look at the sky or the water. Very little contrast was added to any of those areas, only to the areas we wanted to. Now I'm going to go back to Lumenzia. I'm going to do the exact same treatment except to the light tones now. So let's start off with um, L5. Eh, not L5. That's really all the sky. I really just want to add just to the to the to the rocks here. I mean, it's definitely it'll add a little bit up there, but I want to add some to the rocks down here. So we'll have this selected, and then we'll go to adjustments, brightness, contrast, and then we'll put that up a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing with uh, maybe L three. Yeah, L three or yeah, I think L two looks good. We'll select that. And then adjustments, brightness, contrast, and then contrast to around, that's fine. And then we'll go back to Lamenzia. And then let's group, let's group these two together. Oops, <laughs> wrong keystroke. Command G, and let's name this light contrast. And then we can put both of them together in another group, and we'll just name this contrast. And this is the approach that I always do. Like I said, I usually use curves or levels to apply it. But um, And as you can see, you can turn the entire contrast adjustment on and off. Let me remove these marching ants. And you can see what a difference it did. You know, it only added it to the areas that we selected. You don't have any areas really that are too dark. Now, see like right through here, this looks whoops, a little dark for my liking. So what we could do is we could open up our, our contrast group. We know that's the dark area. It's gonna be the, the darkest areas right through here. So we can look right over here at the masks and the area that has the most white is gonna be the least dark of my dark masks. And the area that has the, um, the, the most or the least amount of white is gonna be the darkest part of the mask. So I could go to that and I could lower the opacity of that one. And that's only gonna lower the opacity in the, the specific areas that that mask identifies. 
And you can go back and you can do the same thing with all of these to really fine tune it exactly how you like it. So as you can see, that was very easy to do. It completely transformed the image. Let's, let's zoom in just a little bit and uh, kind of see close up. We'll go to this rock formation here and we turn the contrast on and off. I mean, it really added a lot of punch to this image. It was very quick to do. And in my opinion, it really transforms this entire image from a very dull and boring image with no contrast to a lot of very refined local contrast. Now, normally I would go into each one of these buckets and really kind of fine tune the opacity of each one to get exactly how I like it. But um, if you kind of, get into using luminosity, luminosity mask with this approach, I guarantee you it will lead to many other things. And it is, I promise you, it is really not that hard to understand. You really just gotta, gotta get into it and play around with it. You're not gonna break anything. That's what I was always afraid of is, uh, is doing permanent damage to an image or something like that, which is absurd. But um, yeah, it, it, it's fantastic. This has, you know, applying contrast using luminosity masks has completely opened up an entire new world of post-processing for me. I, I, you know, update shadows and highlights. I even apply colors to um, the brightest parts of sunsets to really kind of exacerbate the color in the sky. So there is a ton of stuff you can do. And it, it it's personally, it, 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 it's very exciting for me to, to really finally understand luminosity masks. So um, I hope this kind of encourages some to possibly check it out. Like I said, uh, this is a great, very simple way to, to kind of get your feet wet with it. Um, I hope the video was uh, informative. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I guarantee I'll get back to you and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Triple A, credits are right. Hang up the phone and let your heart break on the inner lane. 24 twice. She's on the phone, but she's staying on Wilshire Boulevard.